Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. This video is about little books. So if you've got one, you've got 144 pages. If you've got a couple carton full, you've got thousands. So I've got two project or two designs that I'm going to go through, 18 different samples, because you're always looking for different ways to go ahead and use some of your pages. I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. So for these first several card designs, we're just going to be trimming off uh, strips of our little book. So the little book is about four and a quarter by about six inches. So the first thing I want to do is find a section of this to make this five and three quarters. And that's just so I can work with the mat and layering. But you can see what you're looking for is an image that goes across and that goes top to bottom. So we've got no borders, no edges, but we've got a focal that can be narrowed up. And so in this case, I'm working with a little book of the Orient. And all I'm going to do is trim off this section for my topper. And then we look on the inside and I've got a, those same strips left over, divided up for the interior. So let's work with another page that kind of meets those criteria. And this is coming from Enchanted Dreams. So I've got this peacock. Again, I've got a full image. I've got going from bottom to top and side to side. And so, I've already split this up, so let's take a look at the pieces. I've got this one, this one, and this one, and I had the tediest of strip lift over. Again, first off, all I did was kind of trim off just a little section on the bottom to make this five and three quarters. So again, I cut this two and three quarters. This is a strip that is three quarter inches, and then well, whatever is left over is going to be this piece. So we're going to construct this all together. Now in this first sample, I've got to look for a pattern paper. And really what I'm looking for is kind of the same feel, the same colors is more important. And then a metallic. So let me put that together, and I'll be back. I've come back with the finished base card and so everything I said and so let's talk about the materials I chose to pair up with this image. The first off is I've got some really thin shimmery paper. So I've got this. It's this pretty much the same weight as these uh, little book pages which are pretty thin. And something I don't talk about very much is adhesives. And so when you've got something thin like that, you don't want to use a liquid glue. Liquid glue is probably your most economical adhesive. And so I use double-sided tape. And pretty much, I either, when I can use glue, I use glue. And when I have to use tape, I use the tape. And like I said, it's just a matter of economics. And so that's how I layered it. Also, I've got this very busy cardstock. And so this is, when I can use it, I want to use it. And this is a very busy image. This color is right up in here, so I've got that. It's got silver, it's got some, what I almost call raised uh, pink flowers, but all these colors are in here. And then on the inside, I did finish that off already, so I've got this piece with my two remaining strips. So, what makes a handmade card different from a storeboard card is the embellishing. So, when I think about embellishing, First off, I'm looking for a space that I can use. In this case, it was down here, and I chose to put in a salutation of sorts and some embellishments. In this case, I'm looking at this piece, and when I'm looking at that piece, I'm looking first off color and then imagery. And so I see butterflies. So let me go find, a, I think, a bow, and then let me try and die cut some of these butterflies to finish off this first project. So I kind of gave away my embellishments, but it is an embosslet, so it cuts five butterflies at a time. And I just chose to color coordinate. So I brought in my silver, so I've got a couple silver butterflies. Also brought in this backing cardstock, so added some of those. Then added some plain teal butterflies, and so put those on the two opposite corners. So I've kind of got a embellishment here, embellishment here, and then my focal image. And then, as so long as I've got these butterflies, added a couple to the inside as well. Now, I do keep little baggies, so because those cut five at a time, and I've got plenty of dies that do that, I keep baggies, so I've got buttons, and I've got butterflies, I've got poinsettias, puzzle pieces, which actually, we're going to use some puzzle pieces later in this video. So now I want to talk about uh, the sizing of the card, because a lot of you don't make your own card bases, you pre-buy. This ended up to be four by seven. And what I've got here 
is a pre-bought 5x7 card base. And the easiest way to create or recreate the proportions is to do a cutaway. So I'm going to cut off an inch of the front, and this way I've got a 4x7 to work with. I've already picked out another little book page for this next project, and it comes from the little book of Foxy and Friends. So I'm going to use this, and the first thing you're going to notice that I've got borders on this one. And I had talked about not using borders, but I'm going to. It just makes it a little more persnickety because when you trim off to make it five and three quarters, you want to trim off this little snippet. And so I want to make sure that's in picture. And so, same proportions, two and three quarters. I think this is about a seven-eighth strip, and, strip, and that's a three-eighth strip. So let me get that put together. I'm going to leave photos of that last project, and then I'll be back. This is how it finished out, and so pretty much the same thing. I used another embossed, so at this time buttons. But I was careful to, first off, I'm going to hit my little baggie, and I picked out all the pastel colored coated buttons. And this way I've got those already. I cut a couple more out of the chocolate, and I've got a couple leftovers that I put in here. But cutaways are actually really brilliant. And first off, this image, even if I weren't to use the leftover pieces in here. It's a little more sophisticated. He actually looks a little bit taller in this piece than he does here. This is a little bit clunky if you were to use the whole panel. Of course, I'm going to add sentiments. The strip that I cut off of here, I'm going to use, and that is the backing for the sentiment here. And then also on the inside. The other thing about cutaways, this can be a higher profile. So I've got those on pretty uh, dimensional foam pads. And I can extend over here and still be within my envelope. So that turned out really pretty. So I've got sending hugs and then a happy birthday and buttons all over the place. So um, I'm going to leave photos of that. And I also just want to introduce, this can go on forever because this design is really versatile. So let me bring in a couple more pieces that I'm working on. So I've got this page. Of course, you could split this way. And that's what I did here. And this comes from Floral Shimmer page. So I've got a lot of action going on down here. This is pretty plain. And of course, I got this little butterfly. So I'm kind of working around that when I create my strips. And all I'm going to do is, since I'm using, first off, all this on the outside, I want to introduce the sentiment kind of in this plainish image. So I'm going to put that in there. Of course, I'm going to matte and layer. And then I'm going to pop in some more cardstock into the inside and you'll see photos of that also. So I've got that piece and then the last piece for my um, slicing is going to be this one. And let me go get that little book because I forgot it. Okay, I found it and it is the Winter Wonderland, little book of Winter Wonderland. So this technique works really well if you've already got a long image. In this case I've got this kind of antique car and I'm actually going to split it out and spread it over the course of this page. Again, using my whole little book page for the front. I'm going to introduce uh, some embellishment here. And because I'm going to use a dazzle sentiment, I want to introduce some dazzles into this corner, which is, you know, the plainish corner in there. Anyway, let me leave photos of all of this, and then we're going to move into the next style for little books. The second approach I want to show you is over and under. So I'm going to take a little book page, and this comes from the square little book of uh, Floribunda. And so all I've done is divide it up into a two by two array that fits this card base. Well, sort of fits. First off, this is a five by six and a half, which is pretty standard. And so I've trimmed it down, and what I've got is this top right under my panel, and then this one is raised up on foam squares. And so that's pretty simple. It starts with an image that can really go in a lot of different directions. It can be split up. So this is a simple start. And I'm just going to go ahead and add, again, some butterflies, because I see those, and some roses, and finish that up. And then I'll be back with that piece. But let's get a little more complicated. So now I'm still working with a square little book, 
But what I've got here is a page, let me move this so I don't get a shadow. This is a page from Mice to Meet You. And so the first thing I want to do is really decide on this focal. So I kind of put some squares around it and I decided I'm going to use this two and a half inch square. If you look on that side, you can see where it cuts. Now I'm going to fit that right into this corner. And then I'm going to divide up these other pieces. And so I'm going to have a piece here, and I'm not worried about that corner, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. I've got this piece on the front, and then I've kind of got this leftover piece, because this is the way the card's going to lay out. I've already cut my mat, and see where I went ahead and gutted it. But I took this on a tilt, and that's where this piece is going to go under my panel. So it's going to sit like this. And then I've got a piece that is not the focal, but this one's going to be here, and I'm going to put a mat behind it, bringing back that square that I cut out of there. So I've got a square that's going to situate something like this. And then the focal, which in this case are just this group of mice, I'm going to raise up. And that's how that's going to turn out and add some embellishments. So while I'm doing that, I've got one more piece to look at, because this can get as creative as you want it to. And here is the image, and you can see I've got a lot of mice, and I don't like uh, chopping off heads when I can on animals or people. Now, you saw where cars, I don't mind splitting up cars or buildings, but what I'm going to do is first off, I'm noticing if I split it this way, I can have all the mice together, and I could just put that into a rectangle, and then divide this up, and then have kind of this piece left over. So, instead of just putting it behind a rectangle, I've created this panel and this is created from a small cutting die it's actually a present because I've got presents in this image and so it comes with an Audi and an any. and so I just put it down multiple times I've got a little rectangle here I cut myself another focal which I can raise up and then finishing off the card so let me leave photos of all of that and then I'll be back with some of these finished projects As I look through these finished pieces, probably the greatest design element of this, because one is under and the one is over, you've got a place to kind of nestle your embellishments and even some of these unforgiving. So this is something that's not going to squish. Of course, if you've got foam pads on things, it'll squish into a flat card, but this will kind of protect those additional harder elements. I did finish off the inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if I had been a little smarter about how I cut this square little book, I could have had a strip for the inside as well. But I just used more of the butterflies and added some crystal gems. So this made a nice little square uh, image into a rectangular card, which we like here at the station. This one's simpler. I did add some ribbon. Again, this one's raised up. This one is down at the bottom. And then added an additional sentiment. And then here on the inside, I had that last little square, which is this one. And so I just punched out these little photographs and added some stamping. So that coordinates really well. And then this is probably my favorite piece. And I don't know that I've shown this on video before, but taking that little cutting die and making that frame of sorts so that my mice would just kind of peek out in places raising this guy up, adding this bow and because after I looked at it for a while that looked like pieces of sliced bread in the silhouette style so I went ahead and added this other gift kind of to reinforce this image and the inside of course I got more stamping I had did have a little niblet left over and so I added this piece here from the little book page because I like to use everything and anything that I've got left. In fact, I was going to move into landscapes at this point and working with landscapes, but I want to do this once again uh, because this little present die is kind of, you know, something probably not in most people's stash, but I can go with stars. So I'm going to create another sort of image. I've got this piece of scrap base card. Notice it's a lot shorter. But when I start cutting through here, I'm going to use my 
star cutting dies and kind of position them so I've got something like this. I want these guys to be on this end because you can manipulate where things show up on your card. So I'm going to leave photos of those finished pieces. I'm going to do the prep work for this and leave a photo of that and then I'll be back. As I bring back this project, I'm just now noticing how long this video is going. So, I'm probably going to talk pretty quickly, but the only thing I did was I, t I had this little cutting die, which actually cuts out the star image that's got a couple cuts in it. So where I needed to kind of expand, I went ahead and cut that out and then cut one of silver to put this in here. And then it kind of got busy on me, and so when it gets busy, I want to make it look purposely busy. And so I added several more die cuts, a big old uh, glitter ribbon, and then my sentiment. And on the inside, I just have congratulations because this is a new baby card. Anyway, I'm going to leave a photo of that. And I'm into my last segment. So I'm going to pretty quickly do some setups. And so the first thing, like I said, I was going to work into landscapes using the same designs. And so I've got a little book. I think this comes from... Lands actually it's called landscapes and so the first thing I want to do is kind of pick out the piece that I want to be raised and so I'm just going to take the cyclists off of there I've got the sky that's going to come up this way I've got a rock over here and I've got this piece so this is kind of how it divided out I think I'm missing a little strip in there because I cut this into a square and so, what I'm going to do is I decided which piece is going to go under. So this is going to slide under here. Also know I'm using, that last image came from Written in the Stars, and so I'm using this watercolor adorable scorable. And so I just picked a piece that had the greens and the purples from the mountains. And so I'm going to mat and layer. This one's going to be raised up again. But notice that I am sticking to the kind of the same proportions and where this fits on the card. So I'm going to put that together and I'll leave you photos of that. The second piece I've got comes from Cottages or the Little Book of Cottages. And so it looks like this. And all I want to introduce here is just because a little book is landscape. It doesn't mean that's the way it needs to fill out. So I've divided that up. I've got this piece here. And I've already started putting my backing together because I know the one that's going to go in is this cottage because it could be separated out. I've also got a piece at the bottom. Note also, I'm kind of changing that back panel. So this time I've embossed it. And I think I can cover that up if I need to. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to use a cutting die. And so it is this butterfly, and I'm going to cut the butterfly out of this piece. And I've got some coated white that I'm going to place it on, and so I'm going to situate it here. So I've got one underneath. This one's going to be on top of my embossed piece, and this one's going to be raised up and probably have a sentiment as well. And the last, <coughs> excuse me, little book page is going to be this one. Let me get this out of the way. So this kind of a landscape, maybe not so much, but let's do a little combo. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick out the piece that I want to come up. And so I'm going to combo that up, and then I'm just going to slice these into three pieces, mat and layer onto a card. And you're going to see how that's going to turn out. I want to leave this last segment of other stuff that's probably in your stash that will work with these designs. And so other people make little books. 
This comes from creating crafting world, so it's a Pollyanna image, but you can see where this is real similar to the mice. So you can go something in that route. Kanban also makes A6 kind of paper pads. If you're a stamper, why not just a pretty piece of cardstock, stamp your image, and divide up. And then while I'm talking about pattern paper, this comes from Tattered Lace, and so I've already used it to create a couple Eiffel Towers. Now, when you first start doing this, you're probably more likely to go this way, you know, a large image, and then this is actually under the card, raise this up, and this is on the card. But I encourage you to chop it up. And I left the Eiffel Tower standing tall, just divided it up, and so I've got my under down at the bottom, my over in the middle, and then the top of the tower on my uh, panel. Now, so I cut into my panel to create this heart piece. So, uh, be creative. If you want to stay with Hunky Dory, just that pretty piece of adorable scorable. So, the one with the pattern. Now, these guys were actually down at the bottom left and there is some pink at the top. So I split my pink, put it this way, there was also a border, and so raise that up on here. And so that's how that turned out. Of course, you've always got your Whopper toppers. So, I mean, this looks like a little book page. It's a little bit thicker, so you don't have to back it if you're raising it up. But again, just be careful of your foil. So typically I would probably just cut the foil off and then create my piece. And lastly, photographs. What you can do, because these are all images. So I've got this little photo that I need for an embellishment on my scrapbook page and I'm probably just going to slice it. So I'm going to slice it up and stick it on my page. This one, I've got a large photo and I just wanted to make sure you could see that. So do some, I could slap this onto a 12 by 12 page, but why not cut it up, put some over and under. And I'm going to finish that and leave photos as well as the companion page will have different photos but arranged in the same manner. So plenty to do, plenty to look at, and I certainly thank you for watching.